Welcome to the series of videos dedicated to the full stack JavaScript book and the projects from that book. Now we are at the point where we are putting together UI and the API. So in the previous videos we gradually build our API starting with the memory and then adding Mongo database. Now we are taking the board backbone parse SDK example and changing a few things there. So first of all, we have this URL now for the local host. You would use local host and uh, maybe port 1337 like I do. And then for Heroku, you would put this Heroku app URL. And then if you remember from the parse SDK example, this was using parse object. Now we're just using plain backbone model and backbone collection. And we're using this URL. So backbone is smart enough. Once you give it a URL, it automatically knows all the restful methods. So it will fetch the collection, the model, it will update, add, etc. So it will do everything automatically. There is no need to implement manually the jQuery Ajax HTTP requests like we did in the jQuery example. So this is the power of Backbone. Once you get the model, once you get the URL correctly and the RESTful API is spinning, uh, that's basically all you need. And then a uh, few other modifications in the home view. We actually um, rendering it a little bit smarter. So I have this custom event. Let me show it to you. It's called refresh. So you can you can have any name for events. So I just came up with refresh instead of a re-render or render. And what it's doing, basically I'm manually triggering this event twice. Oh, by the way, when this event is captured, the rendering will be, the home, home view dot render will be called, right? Which is uh, just re-rendering of this whole view and injecting it into the DOM. Let me show it to you. It's right here, right? So this event will be triggered just in, just twice. The first time when we get entire collection, right? We don't want this re-render happen on each new element, on each new row, on each new message, right? We only want it to happen once, once we get all the elements. And that's exactly the place so success callback happens after we get the whole response back. And fetch is a backbone method. As I've said, backbone is smart. Once you call the fetch on the collection, it knows what HTTP methods to, to send, what requests to send to the server. And then the second time I'm triggering this refresh, it's when I'm saving something new. So I'm saving a new object. Again, success callback, I'm sure that that was propagated to the server. Otherwise, I would not even re-render anything. And then once once I'm sure it's, it's okay, it's good, I'm refreshing. I'm not adding anything to the collection because this is the callback for collection.add. So I'm adding in the collection before so this is actually inside of the callback. So those two modification from the 06-port-backbone-parse-sdk example. Other files like footer, header, home, template, index.html, they didn't change much. Obviously, index.html doesn't have the parse inclusion anymore because we're going to use our own backend. Speaking of the backend, it's in the file stick 14 port api One key difference between the, uh, the project 12 port api mongo is that we're using the course cross-origin resource sharing headers. Why are we using them? Because JavaScript, by design, limiting us to the same domain calls. So we cannot make Ajax calls to different domains, except when those servers respond with the proper course headers. So this is the course headers. Remember right head? 
So this is uh, way bigger than our hello world right head, right? So access control hello origin, that's the domain. Access control hello methods, that's the method that where the server supports and other headers. So if you want to look further into course, please do so for now. This this few headers will suffice. And uh, options, it's a, it's a new method, HTTP method in itself, in addition to get and post that we must implement in order for course to work. And then in the get and in the post, we again use this access control allow origin. So those are the only things that uh, I've added into this um, board API comparing to the board API Mongo because we will be deploying on two different Heroku domains. That's why we need cores. If you're deploy, deploying on a single domain, that's where you need something like I have in the project 15-board-web. If you go to the 15-board-web, I still left out the cores, but you don't really need them. What you need is this piece. So when all if else is basically false, falsy, they're not executing, we fall back into this last else. And this last else will serve the static files. And if you look into the structure, I have this public folder. It's just a convention. Public means uh, whatever files are. It's just a convention. Public means whatever files are there will be served. Because obviously you don't want to serve your web.js file. It might have some passwords and API keys. Okay, so on line 62, we process that URI which is could be it could be a file name or a folder and the file name but if it's empty like in this case we want to just uh, search for index.html because usually when the folder is empty that's what we want to do we want to get that index file then the next uh, line line 63 it deals with uh, creating a path so we have the underscore underscore dear name and we have static folder. So we create a path and we're using path.join because it's a cross-platform method. You know, on Windows and Linux, there are different uh, separators. So we just provide three arguments to create one path that will work across multiple platforms. Then I'm using static I'm using synchronous methods for getting stats and for reading files. Usually in Node.js you don't want to use a you don't want to use synchronous methods, but um, we don't want any racing conditions, so that's why I'm using synchronous methods here for reading a file and for getting its stats. And obviously I'm processing errors. Uh, the content type header, it's not really necessary. Browsers are smart. But it's it's still good. Maybe you have uh, an old browser. Some users have an old browser. So we do this manually. We check for the file extension. OK. If it's JS, then it's text slash JavaScript. If it may be JPEG, then it's a different content type. And we put the content type in the header. And we put the file length in the header. That's it. We send the file. So this whole bunch of lines was just to serve the whatever files we have in public. We will be serving libraries like required.js, obviously HTML templates, CSS files, so anything will do. And then the rest uh, I just copy pasted from a previous API example. As I said, you don't need cores because this is the same domain deployment. So let me show you actually how it looks in action. I am in the 15-board-web folder. This is the same domain deployment project. We will get back to the different deployment in a few seconds. Okay, so this, uh, this uh, file is running, the server is running. Let me go to localhost 1337 and refresh it. And uh, boom, I see the messages. That's really great. We create a new one and I see it saved it. 
refresh it. Okay, so now this is a terminal output and if you go up you can see that server is processing statics files as well. And if I close it and start it again and refresh it just to show you that the data is persistent, yes, this is our new message. So now let me show you the different domain deployment. So we go to 14 first, which is our API. And uh, we need to create a git repository, add the files, commit them. Okay, so now I'm creating a Heroku app, which will do two things. It will uh, create the app in the cloud, give us the URL, and also add the proper remotes to the Git repository, which is this address. Now we can push and deploy. Now, oh, before we do that, it's using Mongo Labs, so let's add Mongo Labs as well. I have this command saved. So it's Heroku add ons colon create space Mongo Lab colon sandbox. Okay, so it's added. Now we can finally push. Let's see if I have this command saved. Okay, so git push Heroku master will trigger the deployment. Remember, we need two things. We need package.json and proc file for Heroku to deploy a Node.js application. Okay, so now let's go ahead and type Heroku open, which will open our application in the browser. It's taking a little bit of time. Right now we can save this URL. We'll need it for our UI. Let's go back to the editor and go into the 13 board UI. Go into our app.js file. I'm commenting the local URL and putting the Heroku app URL. Saving that file. Let's go back to the terminal. Now let's deploy the UI on a different Heroku domain. Just repeat the same commands. Commit to the local repository. Now we need to create a Heroku app. It will have a new name. That's our new name for our UI. No need for add-ons. Let's just push. So I'm using a small hack to deploy the static UI files to Heroku. It's called using PHP or pretending to be a PHP app. PHP is another language that is not as uh, popular right now. Well, it's still popular, but uh, its popularity declining compared to Node.js. Okay, so now let's open Okay, so now let's open the app. I'm using Heroku Open. You can just copy and paste that URL to your browser. And uh, ta-da! This is our message board. So now let's go and see if it connects to the server. Okay. I see some connection the list. So it went to it went to Afternoon River. This is the same, yes, this is the same. You can also messages slash list JSON. Go and see manually it's empty. Okay, so now let's create our very first message. Submit it. Let's see the request. 
So the very first one was options. And when options comes back, it has in the response headers, it has, it has all those headers that you've seen in the Node.js server that we've implemented. And then it followed by the post. So the actual post, it has our message, which is username azat and message JS world. Close it, we see the message here, we refresh it, the message will be still there because it's persistent. So this is our API. We refresh and uh, we actually see it and we also see the ID. So they're on the two different uh, domains. As you see, Afternoon River, that's for API, and uh, Boiling Depth, that's for UI. So this is one of the ways to deploy. And another way you've already seen using same domain deployment, but the code is a little bit different. So that's it for the book and for all our projects. We put together Backbone API, uh, we put together Backbone UI and uh, the API in Node.js and we use Mongo database for the database. It's all JavaScript across all three layers. It's just beautiful. It's very, very, very good for productivity. That's it. Thank you. And if you're interested in the book, you can get it online and on Amazon and pretty much everywhere. Full stack JavaScript. If you don't have it, go get it. Thank you. Bye.